Good afternoon. The court will go on the record and call the matter of Casey Atchison versus Joseph Trevor, file number 18-17328-DS. If counsel could please place his appearance on the record. Yes, Your Honor. James Saffel appearing on behalf of Casey Atchison. Thank you. And I do see that she is present. I do not see Mr. Trevor at the moment. Um, it is only 101, so I will give him a few minutes. Um, I'll give him about five minutes to see if he signs on or calls in. And then if not, we will uh, proceed from there. Thank you. Okay, it just appear we have Mr. Trevor signing in to Zoom. Sir, if you could please unmute. All right. Yes, can you hear me okay, sir? Thanks for Ken. All right, we are here today on Mr. Trevor's motion regarding parenting time. Uh, Mr. Sapple, anything initial, any opening statement you'd like to make before we begin testimony? Yeah, briefly, Your Honor. Um, as the, I don't know if the court has had an opportunity to review um, the trial brief. Uh, I have. So I'm getting some feedback. I'm not sure why. Um, in any event, Your Honor, uh, the parties were never married. They have one child who's five years old. Um, they have not been back to court for revised motions or orders since the consent judgment of support was entered in 2018. At that time, plaintiff, my client, was granted sole physical custody and they shared joint legal custody. Um, parenting time was to be as they agree and arrange. So since 2018, they have been managing uh, with some difficulty, but managing to work out parenting time. Uh, when they separated um, in 2017, shortly well, about the time of the birth, um, defendant became very abusive, he hooked her, he stalked her, and his abusive conduct is demonstrated by the deposition transcript and other events has continued to this day, even perhaps escalated. And despite that abusive conduct, my client has tried and tried to keep him involved in this child's life, uh, and he has. Um, however, I don't think he's seen the child since December of 2022, when he attacked my client at a restaurant in Traverse City, subsequently arrested after evading the police for a few months, was arrested, uh, charged, and convicted of domestic violence. Um, he is currently on probation. Probation is one year. There's a no contact order as part of the terms of that probation, as well as other terms standard in our jurisdiction, such as no drugs or alcohol or marijuana or weapons. Um, also following the <clears throat> domestic violence incident in December of 2022, my client sought and obtained a personal protection order uh, that was not contested and that will continue in place until uh, December of 2023 this year. Um, the personal protection order, as is characteristic, allowed for parenting time uh, with the minor child provided it was done through an exchange at Safe Haven or some other neutral third party. However, since December 2022, um, respondent has not, or defendant rather, Mr. Trevor has not sought any parenting time. Prior to December of 22, uh, he had seen the child only once um, since the previous June 2022. Um, basically, the child's birth, he's been involved but in a very tenuous way for example he's never once 
called the child to say, I love you, to say good night, um, anything of the sort. He just has never done it. And he's rarely um, purchased gifts for her, never sent a card. Um, he just has been marginally involved. Um, the parties live um, about an hour apart, my client in Traverse City, and, uh, Mr. Trevor in Elmira. Um, you know, he testified extensively in his deposition with his um, stated comments was that plaintiff is a great mother and a good person, but I hate her and I wish she would die. That's characteristic of the kind of language that was heard throughout the deposition, um, where he uses profanity an extraordinary number of times, um, all on the record, uh, all sworn testimony. Um, and this has been my client to testify the way he always talks, the way he talks to her during exchanges, the way he talks in front of the child. It's just extraordinarily abusive, um, uh, offensive, and you know sets a horrible example for this very young child. Um, for example, in December, when he attacked my client at the restaurant in Traverse City, uh, he lashed out at the waitress and called her a c and did this in front of the child. Uh, Mr. Trevor testified in his deposition that he'd probably do it again, actually that, that she deserved it. Um, she had cut him off because he was drinking to excess. Um, this is during his parenting time uh, at this restaurant that was arranged. Um, and that's when he lashed out at her. Um, you know, during that ugly incident uh, at the restaurant, he screamed at her child in her face, um, calling her stepfather a and a bitch. And he did this, apparently, he testified in his deposition because this little girl had said things to him at the restaurant that night to the effect that her stepfather, my client's husband, uh, is stronger than Mr. Trevor. Um, and apparently, and, and some other things uh, of that nature, apparently that set him off to such a great extent that he literally just screamed in the face of a little child, calling her stepfather a fucking faggot. Um, why he did that, why he chose those words, uh, my client will testify that's just how he talks. That's how he is all the time. You know, his relationship with his daughter has been tenuous. Uh, about a year ago, um, he sought to, as they called it, sign off on his parental rights. Doing so, he testified in his deposition um, because of money issues regarding child support. The court can look at the file and, and see that he's been late on child support. And there's been warrant issued um, four or five times uh, since the child was born. I, I believe the child support amount is only about $300 a month and has never been modified since the date of the order. Yet, despite him claiming that he's essentially a wealthy guy, he says he can get $500,000 in 24 hours by selling his assets. He claims to have assets of about $500,000 and debt of only $33,000. Um, but despite his testimony as to his you know, ownership of an excavation company, his recent uh, acquired ownership in a restaurant uh, in Gaylord, I believe, um, you know, his testimony that he makes money in other ways, um, selling things, fixing snowmobiles, um, shoveling snow. Um, he doesn't prioritize supporting his child. In fact, he testified in his deposition that um, my bills and everything else is a high prior higher priority than child support. I mean, he's very clear in his testimony. Everything comes before child support. He's got to pay his bills and he's got an explanation 
for why he does that essentially says, geez, if I don't pay my bills, then I don't have a house. If I don't have a house, I don't have any place for her to stay. Um, in any event, he has sought to sign off on his rights. He actually approached the friend of the court. He testified. Uh, I think he ultimately realized that he had to uh, consent to an adoption in order to actually sign off on his child support obligation. Uh, but it, it's it's an indication of the, the the tenuousness of the relationship. Um, you know, one of the key factors. Uh, best interest factors that, you know, in this case appears to be quite tenuous. Um, another example is in June of last year, um, when he and my client got into a dispute about how he was behaving around the child and whether um, he was having his parents supervise his visits as they had agreed. Um, he got upset when she said, you know, you're not following our agreement. And he proceeded to pack up all of his daughter's belongings into garbage bags. He testified to this and to bring them to my client's house and left them in the front yard of the house. Uh, while she was home, my client tried to protect the child by taking her upstairs and out of view of what her father was doing. He essentially said then and in text messages that I'll see her at graduation. And his parents followed up with a phone call to my client saying the same thing. Essentially what they were saying is we're done with this child. Um, you know, we'll see her when she's older. Um, you know, there's, there's no question that the established custodial environment is only with, with my client. Um, he's never been the, child, been the person the child goes to in any significant extent for any issues. For example, he's never been to a doctor's visit. He's never been to her school. He doesn't even know. Never to school. allowed to. Mr. Trevor, you can't interrupt. Okay, you're going to have your chance to testify here in a moment. Okay, sir. Thank you. Um, he's, he's never been to a doctor's visit, never, never gone to the school. He doesn't know where he goes to school. He doesn't know who the doctor is. Um, you know, he is a person who testified that he really doesn't care about her school, essentially saying that he doesn't agree with the perceived politics that might exist at this school, and he doesn't want to be bothered by it. He doesn't want to know anything about it. Um, there's no question that uh, that the established custodial environment is with my client, and the best interests of this child are to you know, stay primarily with my client. And the question is, how much time should he have? What should the arrangement be with a guy who is this outrageous, this out of control? Um, and, you know, I think at a minimum, it, it needs to be supervised for a period of time. Obviously, getting therapy is something that my client has been pushing for years. Um, his testimony in his deposition is that, you know, that's for, is not something that he can benefit from. I think he said he's not going to go talk to some asshole about a cunt. Um, you know, that's how he talks. And he's just completely unwilling to get help, to get therapy and to come to some kind of better understanding of how, you know, how he ought to behave around his daughter. Um, but he doesn't seem to really care about that very much. Uh, he's more interested in, I don't know, uh, shocking people, outrageous, making outrageous statements, does not seem to care about how he impacts other people. He even testified that he's so upset by his daughter saying things about the new stepfather, her, her stepfather, that he told her he, she can't mention his name in his house, in Mr. Trevor's house. And when questioned about, you know, geez, don't you want to know about her life? He said, no, I don't want to know anything about her life over there. I don't care about their vacations. I don't care about what they do. I don't want to know about it. Don't speak that guy's name in my house. That's what he testified essentially, that he told his daughter. You know, there, there's, that, that's essentially the fact pattern, Your Honor. The other thing that, that I think the court, um, you know, should take note of is that um, the motion that Mr. Trevor filed um, contains no statement of facts, um, none of the information that's required of the pleader, 
that he used a form called a petition regarding parenting time. And under section E, it says use a separate piece of paper to explain what the parenting time agreement is and attach all necessary, you know, include all necessary facts. There's nothing attached. There's no facts about what the parenting time agreement is. Under F, it says, under, as to best interests, use a separate sheet explaining why is it the best interest, the best interest of the you know, the children are, would benefit from your relief. He doesn't attach anything. There's no explanation. There's nothing. And under G it says, use a separate sheet of paper to explain what you want. And he says, see attached. And there he says, I would like to have Lonnie for four days every other week, Friday morning through Thursday afternoon. Um, I believe that his pleading is completely inadequate um, and ought to be dismissed pursuant to uh, MCR 2.111B1 under general rules of pleading that requires that a statement of facts be provided, you know, without repetition on which the pleader relies in stating a cause of action, specific allegations necessary reasonably to inform the adverse party of the nature of the claims. So the adverse party can defend the claims. Um, I'd submit to the court that the pleading is just on its face completely inadequate and needs to be dismissed. And it should be dismissed for MCR 2.504B1, which allows the court sui sponte or on motion, which I'm making now, um, to dismiss the action um, for failure to comply with the court rules. In other words, for failure to state a cause of action, state any fact, any circumstance, let alone proper cause or a change of circumstances to change this order that's been in existence since 2018, he states nothing. Um, so I'd ask the court as a preliminary matter to, to rule on that issue. Um, and, uh, and thank you, Your Honor. That's, that's all I have right now. I will indicate, uh, plenary, it is not my intent to dismiss the motion on those issues. This is a, a motion for pairing time. Um, while certainly Mr. Trevor could have, could have supplied some additional information, um, I think we're on notice that is what he's doing is seeking to set some type of specific parenting time. He is requesting four overnights every other week. Um, the parenting time statute, MCL 722.27a, does indicate that Pairing time shall be granted in specific terms if requested by either party at any time. Their original judgment indicated it as the parties agree, so there was not specific terms. Um, and I don't think there has to be a showing of change, a showing of change of circumstances to request specific parenting time. Um, so I am going to um, allow the motion to proceed. Um, we'll take testimony and see if changes are made and or not, and what those changes would be. Thank you, Mr. Trevor. Please unmute and let me know who you would like to call as your first witness. Um, well, I guess I don't have any witnesses. And um, Well, do you plan to provide testimony yourself or not? Yeah, I mean, I guess. Um, so well, there's a hold on. Hold on. I'm not going to make you provide testimony, but if that's what you want to do, I need to swear you in. So do you want to provide testimony? Sure. Yes. All right. Please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. All right. Please state your name for the record. Joseph Anthony Trevor. All right. This is your opportunity then to provide any testimony you want to provide in support of your motion regarding parenting. Okay. So um, basically after Lonnie was born in uh, April of 18, um, I had uh, started watching over Lonnie, I think like the third day after she was out of the hospital. And then for the four years, I had four to five days every other week um, consistently with overnights until uh, just end of March or April of 22. And then um, we started fighting. And then it, basically she had, um, had said that if I didn't have Lonnie say to my parents that I wasn't allowed to have her overnight and that's how this whole thing kind of escalated um 
I do, uh, I do admit that I, I do use a lot of vulgar language. Um, I'm, um, pretty good person. I'm a good dad. I've got a million things that I've done with Lonnie. Um, I've bought her lots of things. I've got, she's got a, a $2,200 dirt bike sitting in my, um, at my house right now that I bought for her birthday that she never, she got to use one time. She's got a $500 power wheel that she got to use for a summer. She's, um, she goes swimming all the time in our indoor pool and take her to the park and the zoo and all kinds of things that were never mentioned. Um, I uh, kind of avoided this whole situation because I'm not really good with, um, I guess, representing myself or having any real way to represent myself. Uh, income is a big deal. Again, that's the only reason why I had even questioned or pursued um, signing off. It was nothing um, towards Lonnie. It was more or less having the state of Michigan trying to arrest me on a bench warrant for something, you know, for child support that I couldn't pay. Um, being self-employed at the time for the last dozen years, it's been, it's, it's a struggle. And then now um, I'm financially more stable. And yes, um, as the attorney had mentioned, I could sell everything and I could have five, uh, a half a million dollars, but I'd have to sell my house, my equipment, and I'd be living out of a truck. So um, for him to say that I could just at a whim be rich um it's possible but it's not like i'm swimming in money um i filed the motion for parenting time at the friend of the court i'd asked for some help they'd given me some um some contacts for legal advice couldn't afford anything like that same with um any type of appointed lawyer really couldn't couldn't do it so um basically doing all i can for what i know and I'm not asking for anything crazy. I just want the time back that I had with her. And um, four days a week, every other week was Casey's was Casey's idea. We agreed on it, and then five days. And just trying to get back to that. Um, I know that being a single father in the country, you um, you have the world against you. And um, I'm in a, a therapy group right now. It's a men's group. And we're talking about all the issues that um, that came about the situation in December, and it, it really helps. Um, I I'm not a bad person. Um, I do things um, for the community out of just because um, I like to try to get my daughter to um, see that as well. During the tornado, I brought her along, and she helped us do tornado cleanup. Um, see a homeless person, we bought them lunch. I try to teach her good values. Um, I'm not a bad person just because I swear. Um, I do take her to church every Sunday. I think it's good good to have those values. Um, but me and her mother do not agree. And just because I do not like who she's with, um, yeah, I may have said some things that were not 100% uh, right, but I am only human. And the only thing to do is to learn from the mistakes I have made but I don't think that um, keeping Lonnie away from myself um, is good for me or her. Anything else you want to say, sir? <sighs> Got a million things I could say. Don't know what to say. Okay. Does that mean you have nothing else to say at this time? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, unless you've got questions to ask me, I, I really, I couldn't get 10 words out. Um, you know, this has been a really big deal for me. Um, starting with when we had um, started with this over a year ago, I had to kind of step away and I lived out of, out of town for three and a half more, four months. So I really couldn't pursue um, the court or legal action um, with the par parenting time. And then sadly, the altercation happened in December and um, we kind of went at it backwards. But this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I just... Um, didn't want to stir the water or, you know, because things were good. We were, we had the days, but the day that, uh, Lonnie was crying on father's day and asked why she couldn't stay at my house. I told Casey that I was going to take my house and I was going to have her spend the night and go to church with her in the morning. And that's when she decided to not let me have Lonnie anymore. Um, yeah, I was upset. I packed up all her clothes and all her toys. I said, if I can't have Lonnie. 
you might as well take all her all her stuff and she can enjoy it over there. I'm not going to have clothes and toys that my four daughter is going to be outgrown or, or, or too big to use because I don't know when her mother let me see my daughter again. So I dropped all her stuff off. I said, you can keep it. You can go through it, throw it away. I don't care. I didn't throw it in the yard. I put it on the front porch. So that was a lie. Um, she had tires for her car that sat in my barn for a year. I dropped them off and stacked them up. There was nothing that was disorganized. Um, there was no screaming, no yelling when that happened. I did text her and all that stuff. And, and there's pictures of it. Um, and then at the filling station, when this altercation happened, um, and I don't know if it was if it's true or not, but Casey was pregnant at the time. I don't think a woman that's pregnant should be consuming alcohol. And I think that that's a, a very um, irresponsible thing to do as a parent, um, especially if you're expecting. And I know that it's just another part of the whole situation. But um, what happened that day um, isn't a direct reflection on me personally. Um, yes, I do get upset. Yes, I swear. Yes, I use. You know, I say I say stupid things. But again, I'm human and. Um, you know, I go to church every Sunday and I get yelled at for that. How can you go to church and be a Christian and still, and still say this or say that? Cause I'm not perfect. You know, that's all I can say. And that's all I have to say. All right. Thank you. Mr. Saffel, any cross-examination? Uh, yes, your honor. Um, it's true. Is it not, sir, that at this altercation in December, 2022, um, you called the waitress. The I do not recall, but again, like I told you before in the deposition, if it was mentioned that that has been said, then I'm going to assume that I may have said it. I cannot confidently or 100% say that I had said it. Again, I couldn't even tell you what color shirt I even had on that day or what I even ate that day. So anything that I may have said. Um, that's, that's eight months ago, roughly. Um, I couldn't tell you what we talked about last week when you called me. And you also testified at page 55, line 15, that you would do it again. You would call her a again. Isn't that right? Correct. Um, because if, if I was that upset and because I got supposedly cut off when, um, it was only you know we had three i ordered three drinks or whatever then yes um i was upset and she was kind of rude with me and i was not in a good mood so yes um if she did it again i'd probably um i'd probably say it again uh, and what you said to the waitress today you said it with with K uh, lonnie sitting right there lonnie was right in front of you and she heard it correct Correct. She was there. And you also broke Casey's phone that night, correct? I had broken the phone in the parking lot, yes. And then you threw the phone at Casey, correct? No, I, had, I, thought, I'm, I thought I had it to her through the driver's window. And that night, um, Lonnie said th something to you to the effect that... Um, that her stepfather was stronger than you. And you said that he was a little bit, correct? Uh, she had said a, um, a multiple of things. And I think that it was all, um, I personally think it was all um, fed to her. All those, uh, the whole dozen statements or whatever. I feel like I was kind of set up in that whole situation. Um, and I told you that my parents, not allowed to be there. Casey had mentioned that if my parents were to come, that they were going to leave. So I feel like I was kind of singled out in this whole situation. Again, I take 100% responsibility for what I did. Um, you know, I, I still think about it and I can't believe, you know, I still can't believe that I let myself get to, to that, um, to that level. Uh, I, I, yeah, I swear, but I try not to swear in front of my daughter. 
you know, and I know her, Casey swears all the time. She says fuck more than any man that I know. And, um, you know, I didn't think that that was a big issue. Because if her mother can, can fuck all the time, and again, pardon my language, you know, I know we're in court, but if she, if it happens there, I figured, you know, if I say it one or two times, obviously I'm not trying to say it in front of her, you know, I don't want her to go to school and be swearing. Um, but if I do it on accident, you know, obviously I try and catch myself. But yeah, when I was upset, I said things that I shouldn't have said. And um, like I had told you before, I say things and people take it out of context. I told you people can say I'm racist. They could say I'm a homophobe. They could say I'm uh, whatever. But, um, but I'm not. I just, I say things that I don't entirely intend to mean. And that's one of those things. You just can't take back words. You testify in your deposition that you have trouble controlling your temper and avoiding saying the kinds of things that you said that night in December of 2022, correct? Correct. And basically because I had not seen my daughter other than maybe one or two times for that whole year. And it just kind of festered in me, just the resentment and the hate and the like, how could you keep her away from me when I've, you know, been trying to do, uh, you know, do things uh, to be a good dad and to be a good co-parent with Kate. And when she packs her clothes, in no, December, no, let me finish. No, let me finish. Your Honor, I'd ask that the the client or the uh, deponent or the witness not be permitted to ramble on. Answer yeah. the questions. I just well, do you uh, want me to answer? no, or do you want me well, to sir, answer? You, answer? Mr. Trevor, so you had your chance to testify, so he's going to ask you questions. Um, when that question is answered, then he, then he can move on to the next question. Okay. Thank you. In the parking lot uh, that night in December of 2022. You lunged over the car seat from the back of the car and smashed Casey Atchison's head into the window, correct? I do not recall. And then you took the phone, you scratched her hand and took the phone out of her hand and then broke the phone on the ground, correct? I did break the phone, yes. I did grab the phone out of her hand and break it, yes. And Casey said something to you that night to the fact that you can't be acting this way in front of Lonnie. Do you remember that? I do not. And you said, you said, you think I give a f You think I care about Lonnie. Is that what you said to my client that night? Do not recall. Do not recall any of that. And Lonnie was in the car, in her car seat when this altercation took place, correct? Correct. I... I was the one that put her in the car seat. Okay. It, it, so she was in the car. And then when you lunged across her to get at Ms. Atchison, you were literally on top of your daughter while she was in the car seat. No. And she was hitting you and begging you to stop going after her mother, correct? Uh, I do not know. Um, but I was not over top of Lonnie. I was actually in front of Lonnie between her and the front your seat um and was begging you to stop attacking her mother correct do not recall again she could have i don't i don't remember any of the conversation that casey had said that during that night i do not remember anything that had lonnie may have said i do remember that when um i was putting lonnie in the car I'm gonna I'm gonna stop I'm gonna stop you there and go on to another question, sir. What what did you write on the receipt um, to the waitress who had helped you that night? Uh, I do not know. Did you leave her a tip? I did not leave a tip. Did you tell her she could f off? Do not no. I don't do not recall. Again, I. You're on probation now for this offense, are you not? Correct, I am. And there's a no contact order with, with Casey Atchison? Correct. And that's absolutely fine with it. That's okay. And, and you're ordered not to, uh, not to possess any firearms. Is that right? Correct. And I do not. I, um, and you're ordered not to drink. And, and have you had a drink since you've been on probation? No, I'm, I'm not. Um, I don't you, drink. You're also but, ordered uh, not to smoke no. pot. 
Have you had any pots since you've been on probation? Technically, it says that I'm allowed medical. So, but no. Um, so, but yeah, it says no alcohol, no firearms, no uh, other substances unless it's prescription or medical marijuana. You recall, you recall your testimony in your deposition that prior to going on probation, you smoke marijuana every morning? I have a, a bunch of severe injuries that um, almost ended my life. And instead of um, being on opioids, um, I had turned to uh, marijuana in my early 20s, which I was heavily against. I'm going to stop uh, him from testifying onward, Your Honor. All right. Yes, the question was asked. You can move forward or answer. At one point, you were a marijuana grower, right? Uh, yes, I was a caregiver. And you were growing marijuana in your home? Um, I had a garden in the basement, yes. Um, and Lonnie the, would stay at that house, correct? Lonnie would stay at the house, but yes, I also do vegetables and everything like that. So that's I'm going to ask that. That's what I'm gonna, I've been. I'm going to ask that he be ordered to respond to the question and not testify about questions that aren't asked. And, and Mr. Trevor, you do need to be careful with that. You do need to ask answer the question. You're going to have a chance to provide what would be called a redirect. So you would, if there's questions that you were asked now and you want to provide additional explanation, you're going to have your chance after the questions are done being asked of you, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Do you, sir, do you recall testifying in your deposition that you hate, you fucking hate Casey Atkinson? Um, yeah, yeah. And, and that you wish she would die? No, um, I don't wish she, she would die. I mean, I... Your Honor, I'm gonna, I, I, the question was, does he recall oh, testifying oh. to that? Yeah. I'm asking him it's whether he wishes thing. now whether yes. he would die or not. Yep. Okay. Go I'm ahead. Gonna, Next question. On page 94 of your deposition, you indicated that you don't speak negatively about Casey to most people. What? Uh, you got to re repeat that. On page 94 of your deposition, at line seven, you test, you stated, I don't speak negatively about Casey to most people. I say she's a great mother, and that is that. But we don't work together. I fucking hate her. I wish she would die. Obviously not in an accident with Lonnie. But if she were to die of natural causes, I could sleep at night. That would be cool. Was that your testimony, sir? Yep. Yes. Is your testimony today that you didn't you didn't mean what you testified to in your deposition? You're gonna have to repeat that. There is some static over the. You wish she would die of natural causes, correct? I again, it cut out. I I missed the first part. Can you repeat yourself? I'm I'm gonna move on, sir. You testified on page 81, line 22. You hope Casey Atchison would fall down the stairs. Isn't that right? What's that? Uh, again, um, either I didn't hear part of it or it cut out. I just heard well, Casey. Mr. Trevor, I don't know if you've got a bad connection. I'm able to hear the question fully. Um, so I, I can hear you fully, clearly. All I heard was uh, Casey fall down the stairs. That's the only part I heard. Do you recall being asked in your deposition? Did you tell Lonnie? that you hoped Casey would fall down the stairs and hit her head twice on every, on everyone twice. Is that something you told Lonnie? Do you recall that question? Um, I believe I do recall the question and I don't think that was something that was ever said to Lonnie or mentioned in front of Lonnie. Um, Your answer was, I have no idea Sounds like something I would say, but it yeah. is not something I would say to her. Correct. Yeah, that doesn't sound like anything um, that was said. And um, then you testified on page 82, line two. I definitely told that to Casey. Yeah. The testimony I'm today is that you said that to Casey. You hoped she would fall down the stairs and hit her head twice on every stair. But you don't believe you said it in front of Lonnie. 
you never asked if I said it in front of Lonnie, and I never did say it in front of Lonnie. If it was anything that I had ever said, it would have been to Casey directly. And this would have. I'm going to read the question back, sir. And the question was, did you tell Lonnie? No. You hope Casey falls down the stairs. No. Your testimony is is that you did not. And if Casey Atchison said you did, she'd be lying. Is that right? Yeah, because I never said it in front of Lonnie. If I did say anything like that, like I had mentioned before in the deposition, if it was something that I had said, it would have been the Casey directly. And it wouldn't have been the Lon and Lonnie wouldn't have been there. Um, because usually if if I something that had happened or was said, it's like, well, that might sound like me. This doesn't sound like anything that had happened. On page 100, line 14, I asked you whether you had said something to Lonnie about her mom leaving so she could get dicked down. Did you ever say that to Lonnie? Gosh, I do not recall. Even even trying to think back to deposition, I know you sent me everything, email and, and paper, um, but I do not recall. Um, Did you ever use the words... Your mom is going to get dicked down. Did you use those words? I do not recall. You might have. You just don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I got, I'm trying to remember. You've got me trying to remember stuff from eight months ago to four or five years ago. So, um, yeah, I mean, just your next question. You made a comment in front of Lonnie about her mom they're seeing her mom's face in the obituary. Is that right? I had meant I had said to Casey at the bowling alley, and this was after the one of the supervised visits that she wanted to do with me. She basically had stalked was my shadow the whole time. Um, when it was supposed to be our our, our father daughter time, um, I told Casey. I said, the, I said the next time I I hope to see your face is in the obituaries. Because, um, I don't know, I was upset. I and you testified to that on page 100, beginning on line 23. And you said that in front of Lonnie, didn't you? You deny that you made Casey Atchison during your relationship with her. Is that right? Can you repeat that? You deny, do you not, that you raped Casey Atchison during your relationship with her? Yes, of course I deny that. And if she testifies you did, she'd be lying. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, and we could go into in the, on to that, but um, if she didn't want me, I mean, I was eating, okay? And she didn't, she was acting weird and this was pregnant. So we stopped having foreplay and, and I thought that she had, I don't know, some self-conscious issues or whatever because of... The sure, I'm going to stop your testimony. Um, it, you've already had a chance to testify. You can okay. do that again later. Next question. You've not asked to see Lonnie since December of 2022, correct? Uh, I believe that is false. Well, do you put anything in writing to my client about seeing Lonnie since the domestic violence incident last year? No, I haven't. I don't. Did you call uh, my client to ask about seeing Lonnie since December of last year? No, I can't. I, so how is it that you did request time with Lonnie since December of last year? Through the court. What do you mean? Okay. Other than this pleading, that's the only thing you've done. You didn't, you didn't try to establish a parenting didn't, time. Let me no. ask the question, sir, please. No, I did not try to contact Casey to work on this or resolve it with her directly. No, okay. I decided that um, it was time for me to step up and that I should have listened to my other business partners and friends and hired a lawyer and had done this the right way. You could have gone to Safe Haven or use some other third party neutral to exchange Lonnie, but you just chose not to do it. Is that right? We never had that. Um, that was there was nothing ever set up like that. No. That's what that's a false statement. She wow. had she had asked if 
we could meet up and I could see Lonnie basically like what we did at the bowling alley and at the park. And on both of those instances, she just basically had, had followed me around like a shadow made me really uncomfortable and gave me a lot of anxiety because it feels like I'm doing something wrong when I'm just spending time with my daughter. And that just kind of fueled more resentment and, and, um, and hate really. And something that, um, your honor, you've been, or, so you've been laid on child support payments um, for ever since she was born, correct? Basically, yes. Um, and you, but, your, your testimony in your deposition was that child support is, is the lowest priority, that your other bills come first, correct? Correct. That, because... Um, Sir, you answered the question. Yeah, go ahead. Keep keep asking. Late last year, you bought a new truck paying $53,000. Is that right? I financed a new vehicle, yes. And you put $5,500 down, I believe your testimony was in your deposition. Pretty close to that, correct. And your monthly payment is $850 a month for that fancy truck, correct? You mean my safe vehicle that I had to purchase for my daughter because her mother didn't like the vehicle I had? Yes. I'd ask that, that you be responsive to the question rather than testify, sir. You'll have a chance to say that kind of thing later. Do, do you understand what I mean by that? Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, and you testified in your deposition that you can get $500,000 in 24 hours. That was at page 96, line five. Isn't that right? I could I could have a fire sale and sell everything off. I'd be I'd be homeless, but I'd have money. So your testimony today is that you have a net worth of approximately a half million dollars, but it's tied up and it's not liquid. Is that right? Yeah, you, you pulled my bank statements. I have no liquid. You know that. So, sir, you testified also that that you do most of or much of your work on a barter system, correct? Correct. Um, and you also testified that on your tax returns, you show a loss virtually every year, is that right? Correct. Being a self No, no, no. I'm, not, I'm look, not looking for an explanation. That's okay. correct. Is that right? Yeah. And you also invested in some investment real estate uh, about three years ago with a partner, correct? Two years ago, yes. And your goal, I believe you testified, your goal is to pay no taxes. That was page 39, line 17 through 25. Do you recall that? Yeah. Who wants to pay taxes? You claim that you work 24-7, right, sir? Uh, sarcastically, yes. Okay, your, your testimony then now is that despite your repeated testimony in the deposition that you work nonstop, constantly, 24-7, that was sarcastic testimony? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because obviously nobody can work 24 hours straight in a day without dying because you only make it about three days or two days. Did you recently invest in a, in a restaurant? I did. Um, I don't know and if you would say you yes. You testified yeah. that you work five to six days a week. It's yes. Well, it's down to four. I'm going to just ask you to answer yes or no. No, it's four. Well, you testified that you work five to six days a week on page 11 of the deposition. Yes, and it's changed, and now it's four. I'm not asking whether it changed, sir. I'm asking what your deposition testimony was. Yes. And your deposition was taken just recently, June 30th of this year, right? Two months ago, yes. And you are now a, what, a 47% owner of this uh, national franchise restaurant. Is that right? 45%. And you have some partners in that business? I have partners. And you're paid a, a salary of $1,000? Correct. Plus profit sharing? Yeah, whenever that happens. I think you testified that you work on Saturdays basically all day, sometimes late into the night you mean excavating work may have said that yes you also recently purchased air conditioning units for resale correct where'd you get the money to purchase those oh i uh, i actually did 
um, some excavation this spring that allowed me to um, get ahead. And that's the money. You testified also that you got a bank loan in order to buy the uh, re investment real estate and that you represented your income as dollars a year. Is that oh, right, sir? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the personal loan was the cover. I, I'm going to ask that you not testify okay. at this point. I'm not. I'm. I'm not asking you to explain this. All right, keep going. You testified in the deposition that you don't care if Lonnie's stepfather is her best friend. You don't want to hear his name around your house, correct? Yes, I said that. I asked you on page 102, line 13. You were telling. Lonnie, not to say Adam's name around your house. And your answer was, yeah, exactly. We don't talk about him. I don't get him. I don't care. I don't care if he's your best friend. We're not talking about him. I told her I don't care. And Casey says, well, that is mean and rude. And I was like, I don't give a fuck, to be honest, you know? And it's like, if we are in the same house, she can tell me what they do or whatever, but I'm not going to hear stories about her and Adam and this and that and all this other shit. I don't care. And I asked you then, why not hear stories? And your answer is, I don't care because I don't care because I would rather end up having to do some of those things. And you go on. It, I believe I asked you, you know, is there any way you can get over your hurt feelings and listen to your daughter as she tells you about her life? And do you remember what your answer was? No. It was essentially, no, I can't. I'm not going to do that. I don't care. What do you say? I don't give a f about that whole part of her life. This is page 104, line four. I don't give a f about that whole part of her life. I don't care about her mother and what they do together. I don't care what her and her stepmother do together. I don't give a f if they go to Fuji, Fiji, Hawaii, Jamaica. I don't care. Is that your testimony, sir? Yeah. Sounds like you're adamant about it. You really don't care. You don't want to hear about her life. Is that your opinion? I'm asking you, is, is that how you feel? Uh, no. Were you lying in your deposition? No, you're just taking things out of context. We wouldn't be sitting here today. I, if sir, I I'm not asking. There's not a question. You testified in your deposition that you said to Lonnie or to my client, I'm not sure which, see you at graduation. Did you say something like that when you were dropping off her clothing and belongings at my client's house in June of 2022? <clears throat> no, I didn't verbally say any of that. It was actually, I think, via text. And I had told her, if I cannot see Lonnie and all that, she can have a good life and I'll see her when she's 18. Because the way that her mother... Yeah, that's... that's. I'm not asking for an explanation yep. as to hey. why. You, that's what you said. That's Next your question. testimony. Next question. And you also testified on page 85 that you don't regret or think it was a bad decision to drop Lonnie's clothing at Casey's house. You don't have you don't have any second guess about what you did that day, do you? Um no, either it was I return everything or I throw it in the trash because the clothes I'm not asking for I'm not asking for an explanation, sir. Okay. You don't think it was a bad decision. That was your deposition testimony. Yep. You testified on page 84 that the best gift you could give to Lonnie was not showing up at her birthday party because you would have been an asshole. That's page 84 of your deposition. Do you recall testifying to that? Yeah, I sure do. We had talked about that. Page 84, line one. I asked you, what did you mean when you said best gift to Lonnie was not showing up? What is that? Was the question. And your answer was, I would have been an asshole. And you said, that's right. And you would have ruined the party. And I, I, essentially what you were saying, I believe, is that you didn't show up at a birthday party because you wouldn't be able to control your urge to be an asshole. Is that right? 
Correct. Here's you use the word 35 times, 35 times, 37 times, eight times, four, eight times, and bitch 12 times in your deposition, your sworn testimony. Does that shock you at all to hear those kinds of numbers no. relative to your testimony? No, I told you that that's how I, that's basically how I talk. And you talk that way around Lonnie also, don't you? No, no, not entirely. Sometimes it does come out, but no, if, if I'm in, if I'm in school or if I'm around kids. I'm not asking for an explanation, oh, sir. Okay. And ask me another question. You don't know the name of Lonnie's preschool and her kindergarten, correct? Correct. I was never allowed or invited. Is it, sir, it's a yes or no. Yeah, I don't know it. You don't know the name of her doctor either, do you? Never allowed. No. Nope. And I believe you essentially testified you don't want to know about her school because you don't like the liberal bullshit that you perceive to be ongoing at her school. Is that about right? Basically, yes. You've never been to a doctor visit, correct? Never allowed, never invited. Not even when she was pregnant. You've so never called a... Lonnie one Lied. time Wrong. since she's been born. Wrong. When, she, when she's at my client's house, you've never called one time, correct? Wrong. Lie. That's wrong. That's a lie. went on a family vacation to Florida about a year ago. Do you recall that? I do. You went with your parents, do you recall? I do. And on the way to meet my client and Lonnie, uh, you got in, in an argument with your parents, correct? Yep. And you showed up late at the meeting place, the aquarium, correct? Correct. And you had gotten mad and you punched the TV in your parents' van, correct? Correct. You broke the TV. Correct. And you testified on page 105, beginning at line 17, after being asked about punching the TV, you said... They wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen. They were going for two hours in the wrong direction. Can't get out of the vehicle. We are all screaming at each other. And so basically I was like, if you don't listen, I'm punching this TV. Did that, did it stop them? You asked? No, break the TV. Oh, then they'll listen to me. This is you testifying. You're going in the wrong direction for two hours. I told you, you are going to be late and Casey is going to be a bitch and it is going to ruin this vacation. That was your testimony describing the events inside your parents' van on a family vacation in Florida about a year ago. Is that right? Correct. Is it fair to say your parents were not very happy about you breaking the TV in the van? They really didn't care. Uh, I'm, yeah. Ask me another question before I ramble on. You finally did make it to the aquarium, right? We did. And then at the aquarium, you got upset with Casey, right? Uh, I don't know. I guess where you're going with it. I don't know. Well, I asked you on page 106. Sure, yeah. I don't, I don't have the page 106 or 110 or whatever in front of me. But yeah, go ahead. Well, That's I can get it in front of you if you'd like to look at it. What's that? I say, if you'd like to look at it, I'll bring it up and share it on the screen right now. That's fine, don't waste your time. Page 106. I indicated in a question that you had sexually harassed Casey when you arrived at the aquarium by making comments about her breasts. Do you recall that? Uh, yes. And your answer was at line six, because her nipples were hanging out. She was walking out with her, yeah, half her fucking tit poking through the shirt. Yeah, you say. I asked you, what did Lonnie think of that comment? You said, I don't know. She wasn't close. You were upset with the way Casey was dressed that day. Is that right? No, I just thought it was trash. I'm sorry, what was the testimony? I said no, I just thought it was trashy. And, and it upset you, correct? I mean, I didn't care. Uh, 
I just thought, um, like, just I thought it was out of context. I don't know. And then you 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 flicked her breast or her nipple with your hand, right? With my finger, yeah. Why did you do that? Because I said, what's this about or whatever? Because I don't know. I just thought that it was odd to see, I don't know, her, her nipples and shit hanging out of her shirt at, that day. I don't know. I don't know why I did it. It was because, of, I don't know, we've got, a, I don't know, we have a kid together and I thought it was just to like, I don't know, lighten the mood or just mess around. I don't know. I don't you know. You thought that, that flicking her breast or her nipple with your finger would lighten the mood is that your testimony no i'm i did it because i thought it was out of context for her to be there flawless and i was based on basically like saying like what what what's up with this like i don't know i guess friendly I, I don't know. That's your way of being friendly with well, Kate. Well, no. Yeah, sure. Sure. You sent text messages to Casey not too long ago, basically indicating you're still infatuated with her. Correct? Um, yeah, I had. And that no. you are having a difficult time getting over the resentment you feel for her leaving the relationship. Correct? Yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, just because now, but but yeah, go ahead. Well, is your testimony that that is correct? You sure. you texted her about the resentment you feel. Yep. You don't value college education much, do you? I think college education is, is for people that don't know, I guess, how to be self-sufficient or if it's for a degree where it's needed um, just to get a job. You testified at page 35 that colleges... Are for idiots. idiots. Yes. Correct? Yes. That's how you feel, right? Correct. Unless you're required to have a piece of paper stating a degree, I feel like it's a waste of money and it's a coup to keep people in poverty. Because if you have a hundred thousand dollar degree and you're working at Walgreens as a cashier, you just wasted a bunch of money and you're an idiot for doing so. You probably won't encourage Lonnie to go to college, correct? Wrong. Um, um, if she wants to go into a uh, medical field, which I was into the medical, or if she goes into a trade school or and anything. You said like you were into the medical. What, you mean the medical marijuana? Is that what you mean? No, no I, was a, I was an EMT and I was a firefighter and I almost died. And I, I, I basically was too disabled to, to be a volunteer firefighter. I was going to be a paramedic. I went to art school. I've done, I've done other schooling other than high school. I've done trade stuff. I don't think it's dumb. I just think you're an idiot if you go and get three minors don't, and you don't get a degree for something that you're going to use. Your Honor, I'd move for admission of um, the deposition dated June 30 of Mr. Trevor. And I believe the court has the original there. Mr. Trevor, is there any objection? To what? I'm sorry. To, he's asking to admit the deposition transcript as an exhibit. Don't, don't know what that means. Well, he's asking to admit it as an exhibit in this case. Are you? Do you object to that or do you not object? I don't know. Whatever that gets us done faster. I don't care. So I, just an I just need yeah. an answer. I just need an answer. Yes. No, I don't. I don't know. Just whatever to proceed. I don't care. All right. I need you to give an answer. Object. I don't know. Okay. Object. So, Mr. Saffel, I know you were able to use portions of the transcript to either impeach the witness or address his statement. So given his objection, I'm not going to admit the entire transcript. Um, you were able to get testimony in as far as some of the key issues in that hearing and that testimony. So all that is in the record, but I'm not going to admit the entire transcript as an exhibit. I understand. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. 
Your Honor, if I could have just a moment, I'm, I'm gonna try to make sure I can screen share some documents. Um, sure. can, can we take a five minute break? Yes, that's fine. All right, let's take a five minute break for everybody. Thank you. <laughs> 